House of the Dragons rating House of the Dragon ratings fall far below expectations during season one. I don't know what those expectations would have been, but it was never going to become what it used to be when Game of Thrones was the show that it was. And what's funny about that is to me, it tells you how fast the world changes. In this case, it's the streaming wars, but I saw Andrew Schultz made a post today about like, he showed like when the Wright brothers like flew the first airplane and then like when we went to the moon and said like this these were like 66 years apart well in streaming the you know 2019 might as well be forever ago because it's a very different world that we live in now when did game of thrones begin were were the streaming wars even no they weren't even a thing it was on hbo it was still on hbo go at the time like you couldn't wow. watch it like, remember remember hbo go that yeah was a thing. you just uh, reminded me <laughs> that, that that was a thing like i remember i was i was living in minneapolis uh and my roommate had it because i i couldn't afford hbo <laughs> no. what year was that 2012 i think okay 2013 yeah uh, so it was a different landscape then it was so for sure i don't know what they expected the ratings to be but there was a huge drop between uh weeks two and three uh well, after, after episode three they, I, I don't know how they could have thought it would compete with original, the original viewership, right? Never like was you going can't to. even get close to it, let alone surpass that. So, so they're 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 barely getting over two point seven. Like the the premiere was two point one seven million, and then it jumped to two point six four million in week two. But the thing is, is because it's streaming, your immediate numbers aren't as important. It doesn't really matter that much how much people are tuning in right then it's how many people actually tune in at all throughout that week i think with holding on to cultural influence for longer and having these staggered releases that watch time would be more important than just the views on a pilot yeah well i think i think they're kind of um they're programmed to compare it to how they used to compare old Game of Thrones. And back then, yeah. it wouldn't have been a watch time model. Yeah. It would have been judging it based on how many people actually tuned in during the premiere. The article basically points out, though, that they still think there's a lot of stink on it from how bad season eight was. And also that uh, the fact that the that they're trying to build off of like a previous edition of the books but he hasn't even finished the actual book series yeah i don't even think he plans to i think he's probably fatigued with the whole thing i think it's done i this is one of my other conspiracy theories i think it's done and he's gonna release it when he dies Huh. He's got enough money to live on. He doesn't need the release. Why of the does book. he want to wait until then? Uh, maybe he doesn't want to know. What pe- maybe he doesn't care. What pe- he doesn't want to hear what people think of it. And let's face it, Game of Thrones became such a huge cultural phenomenon that it's never going to actually live up to the hype of the show and the books combined and where they are now. At least in my opinion, it will not. So I, I think he's like he's just sitting on the manuscript. Uh, and when he and when he dies, he's just gonna. It goes out through That's his... That's in his will? Yeah, like it goes out through his... I don't know if George R.R. R. Martin has kids. I'm assuming he probably does. Maybe, I don't Not know. sure. Uh, his personal life. But I can imagine, like, you know, he's got a lawyer. He's got uh, a law firm on retainer. That's job it is to, to release it once it comes out. Well, once he does. Yeah, in do you think he's disappointed death. with how it's been adapted? No. And that might be part of the reason why? My favorite part... No, no, I don't know if that's it. But my favorite part of all of these is listening to, like, the writers have to pretend like they actually really love this stuff. Like, when they make their adaptations of their books, like, it's so great! Yeah. When really they probably don't think it's all that great, but it affects their bottom line if they don't speak nicely uh, about the properties. I Yeah, I suppose so. So, uh, the other thing is, is I'm up through episode three, uh, and it's... Fine. Well, supposedly episodes four and five are when things really ramp up with (laughs) the incest and the, you know, just general not safe for work content. NSFW, A subject of debate right now. If you have children in the room, you may cover their ears. I really hope no one watches this show with children in the room. But I, I, I get I cover their ears uh, every time. Or what was it like? They have like the there's like the plug in for your computer that Tim was talking about, and he's like every time what? it says Republican or, or right wing, it says did bad thing rather than listing what they actually do. It's like a plug in that changes it and just says did bad thing. <laughs> yeah, they could do that. Wow. Uh, so this article says House of the Dragon viewers call out fellow fans for romanticizing incest scenes. This is what Hollywood wants. Uh, okay. 
I don't know if this is what Hollywood wants, but they certainly have a, a, a strong uh, desire to cover this stuff and, and put it in shows on a regular basis. Well, it's now seen as a given, particularly with Game of Thrones, but it's going to spread out and branch out as a theme f- for other shows from that point. It said incest should come as no surprise to Game of Thrones fans. I don't know why that is. Why, why shouldn't it come as a surprise? It should be a surprise. Like, it should always be a little off-putting. Uh, it, a lot <laughs> off-putting. We've Especially talked about this before in other shows. If, if the show is framing it as a bad thing, which is the qualifier that is consistently brought up. Well, like, at least it's, it's bad. Yeah, at least it's shown as something to make you uncomfortable in the show, right? It's a moral dilemma that you're supposed to wrestle with. But that's not what in reality is being received because the fans are, I mean, at least the ones who are disturbed by it um, are seeing a faction romanticizing it and shipping it. I hate shipping, even when it's fictional characters. Oh, shipping is like part of what's damaged all of this. Is, is there's so much uh, the shipping culture in, in shipping? has spread out from yeah. like the darkest corners of DeviantArt and Tumblr into mainstream conversations on social media that I can't believe. What is shipping? What is oh, shipping? You know, yeah. I almost feel like we shouldn't tell her because her life is so much better off not knowing. <laughs> oh. Okay, ship is short for relationship, right? Okay. Um, I learned that on this show, weirdly enough. I knew what shipping, shipping meant, but I didn't know the the actual phonetic <laughs> meaning yeah. of it. But um, it's when people want to fictional or maybe real people okay. to be in a relationship. Okay, that makes together. sense. So they're shipping a blood-related niece and uncle. Oh, no. And we, I mean, that essentially proves that they're, the show is not accomplishing what... What the they're fans defending do. it are claiming it is accomplishing, which is like showing you something morally complicated and making you uncomfortable with it to like, I don't know. Being, <laughs> being into it. To, <laughs> to like analyze the social dynamic of ancient Northern Europe. Yeah. I don't even when, know. When it, was, what, a, when it like, was a prevalent thing. Yeah. But people do that with like porn. But now too. they're making yeah. it prevalent again in contemporary society and changing people's feelings about incest. And it's like, what could possibly be the reason for this? Why do you think that is? Do you I, have, do, I, can you can you think of a reason? I can't like even imagine being in their shoes what they would like it other of, than just shock value and wanting people to watch the show purely for how risque it is. It, it, it also diminishes the shock value, though. Once you repeat that theme over and over again, you can't go back to it. And have then it you need to make shocking. it more and more extreme. So, I, so I, where I was, do we go from there? Oh no, I don't want to find out what next season is going to happen. Like, if, I, yeah, if I don't know either. Normal now. So it, it has like three tweets here from people who are like that. And my favorite part is like they're like confused and know it's wrong, but can't help but uh, find it good, right? So yeah. the, uh, the one says, why is Damon and Rhaenyra so hot together? They have no right. And then the other one basically says the same thing and says they're so confused. And that is like, uh, it is a weird shift in our culture that it's even being discussed. And I feel like it, it would have been better left unsaid, like untalked about. But the other thing I thought it was like you said, like what would be the purpose of it? I was thinking back to like, remember when California like decriminalized get, knowingly giving someone AIDS? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, yeah, the, 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 like culture is just in general going in a bad direction. I mean, sure, but like, why, from the perspective of the showrunners, thank you, is this something they want to show as like at least a morally neutral, yeah, or like tantalizing theme? When I, I think it's also relevant that. There's this huge age gap between the actors yeah, and then the a same. huger age gap between the characters with their fictional ages. When when we were getting ready for the show today, um, I, I walked by Mary and she's just looking at the picture of uh, of Rhaenyra and she's like, she looks like she's seven. Yeah. She literally does in this in this screen cap. She looks like an actual child. Yeah. The the actress is twenty two. Uh, so and then Matt Smith is like forty, yeah, almost. Probably. At least that's the right way to do it. Have an adult who can. Well, they I know, but then do it fictionally in a show, but yeah, but then the 
the actress who plays Alicent Hightower agreed to do sexual scenes when she, like, contractually agreed to it when she was 17 and then they began filming them when she like after she turned 18 i like this part here yeah. it says the person says <laughs> how can Wait. you consent to that then exactly that's what we're saying like it's just the definition of grooming There's this whole franchise i just think is like so i don't know like i think it's uniquely deviant yeah i think a lot of media and shows have that kind of grooming aspect to them whether it's intentional or not or for shock value or a darker at least they used to attempt to hide it whereas we found out this information from an interview of the actress where she just openly admitted yeah that she signed these contracts and took this role as an underage like a minor and then as soon as she turned 18 they began filming intimate scenes with her it is in broad daylight and i don't know what reaction we're expected to have at this point Um, it's like testing the boundaries constantly pushing mm -hmm. pushing the boundaries but not doing so artistically just by i guess violating the sensibilities of the viewers but also the but also part of it's like uh, we had a culture in like listen you weren't even alive in the in the late nineties and the early two thousands where it was uh, well in the early two thousands but it was a culture that was constantly pushing boundaries and becoming more and more uh, I mean the 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 religious right at that time was complaining constantly about over slippery sexual, slope yeah slippery slippery slope over sexualization of women yeah uh, and what it would do to society if if we did this uh, and companies I think of like. WWE, the WWF at the time with like the Attitude Era where all of the women were hypersexualized. Granted, they still are today, but they're actual athletes and, and can do their job. Uh, hyper violent, hyper hypersexualized. And it was somehow more innocent than a time now, which is weirdly puritanical in some respects, mm-hmm. but also far more deviant in others. Well, it's puritanical in the respect that they openly admit to planning an intimate scene for seven months straight with an intimacy coordinator and well, robotically yes. s- choreographing simulations of sex. But then they are showing it to the audience with no preparation, no context, no reason that advances the plot and solely to shock them and d- and also to disgust them. And I'm okay with the concept of like, Showing something that's supposed to disgust an audience to get a, a how reaction. How far do you take? But that, how though? far do you take it? Mm-hmm. In this case, it, it looks like we're going straight to children. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I think we've like I, I had this argument with, with someone once where I I, I I saw a comment on on like one of the videos yesterday that called me black pilled Brett and and that can be Is true. Is that who you are in, on this in a, show? In a lot of respects. I felt like society would would draw the line <laughs> when we when we heard the term maps. And, and, right and that, now i'm not even so sure if i buy that society will actually push back anymore uh and in this in this case i think it's kind of like the frog in the boiling pot and they just kind of do it little by little and make it a little bit worse and a little bit worse and a little bit worse uh yeah. to the point uh, that nothing shocks you anymore and it's working yeah i feel oh, that is. even this becoming a subject of debate Like, I know there are fans who find this disturbing and who are against the shipping. Um, Like, one of these tweets says, wait, uh, there are people, actual human beings, who legitimately ship Rhaenyra and Daemon? Thanos was right. Yep, that's my favorite one. (laughs) At the very least, there's people pushing back. Some people are pushing back against it, but I don't think it's even a good thing that this has become a subject of debate. It's still pushing the Overton window of what's acceptable, that you are forced to... Be, that certain what, viewers are cornered into saying that this isn't okay. Like, you shouldn't even have to say that out loud. What it does is it becomes the example that they use. The next time something comes yeah. up, they're like, well, they did it in House of the Dragon and nothing bad happened. Therefore, it's old Therefore, news. Therefore, it's fine. And let's they're, push the envelope even, even further. further. Exactly. So uh, it's kind of done like that on purpose. And like, Now, I'm not saying that there's some nefarious cabal of weird Hollywood pedos uh, in lizard skin out to, to steal your children. But I am saying that it is a concerted effort to change our moral compass as a society through arts and entertainment, which is clearly far more uh, effective of a means of reaching the public than through anything like public policy seems to be. Yeah, like one of these tweets said that 
they said, I feel like Game of Thrones has made everyone casually accept incest on TV. Yep. Mm-hmm. They're openly admitting it. And it's like, I'm surprised that anyone is willing to even openly confess that they're confused by this. Yeah. It's not a confusing subject. At least it didn't. It, it should be was fairly never, black and white. It was never confusing before. Why is there a gray area now yep incest that was that was artificially created by the media yep absolutely i don't Uh, think this is like something that the audience demanded it's just more of uh do you okay do you think that this is also um as much as it is part of the media do you think it's also uh somewhat reflective of society in general because i was also thinking of the anna de armas thing where she says that she created this piece of art uh, and basically has nude scenes and that they're going to end up becoming viral and that kind of disgusts her. I'm like, but you're still putting it out there. But right. they're putting it out there because there's clearly public interest for it. I feel like... So who's to blame here? Is it us that consumes but it? But they're or astroturfing it, that public interest in it. They're trying you to believe create that it's that artificially interest. created. I don't think that that's something the consumers demanded. And also, like, it was perfectly possible to make sexually suggestive content in films when we had decency laws and that was done artistically and it was done in a clever way and that's something i can genuinely appreciate i'm not sure how i feel better too i'd I'd rather not know what everyone looks like naked i'm not sure what how i feel about can you explain how you would uh uh impose i'm not sure if i'm in for the decency law i mean maybe I, I don't know about I, I'm not saying that, how but that could be enforced today. To, um, it's been so long since... To, like, suggest something's happening in a scene without yeah. being, like, in your face about it. Yeah, like, I, think about if we had watched Top Gun Maverick, which you love. I love it. And we had to watch an entire, like, uninterrupted sex scene between well, if you're Maverick me, and I, Penny. So That's I, so awkward. Do I have to see and Jennifer that, Connelly naked? Oh, no. <laughs> but Brett, it's a family-friendly movie for I'm, a reason. I'm, I'm half kidding. Uh, and plus, and I don't want to see. Tom I'm Cruise sure naked. there was a question as to like how, how to, to film show. that yeah. or what to show. It's something that didn't even need to be thought about before. There is a little bit of apples and oranges here, though, because the 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 I, I don't know what the rating was for Top Gun Maverick. It was probably PG-13. Is not in the same rating category as Game of Thrones, so it's not like they're sent to the same place but back in the day you would see this in movies and not television and if you wanted to go see an r-rated movie and you were a kid you had to either get your parents permission or sneak in now now kids are literally sat on a couch with things on autoplay yeah and this is one of them and you can it also it's also funny too because then you have disney who who like um censored scenes from like marvel shows on their platform and and put like age restrictions on how you could get it on how you could get to it Mm -hmm. but then this is like i think this situation with anna de armas is fundamentally different though because she seems to have filmed scenes she was genuinely uncomfortable doing yeah she and then and, and like she condemns what is in the scene but then also claims it was necessary to accurately portray Marilyn's life. I want, I want to read this quote. So, so it says, The actress added that the movie was outside of her comfort zone, but she did it for the film's director, Andrew Dominic, and the iconic Monroe. She says, quote, I did things in this movie I would have never done for anyone else, ever. I did it for her, and I did it for Andrew, she said. That's such a twisted way to word it, because yes. you are actually dishonoring the memory of a dead woman who likely wouldn't be okay with a POV abortion shot yeah. that like exposes one of the lowest moments of her life in probably an inaccurate way. Oh, a propagandistic way, I'm yes, sure. Yes, yes. And I mean, there was a lot of uh, social media controversy about that movie as well. That's a different story. Yeah. But... I mean, I think Anna de Armas sort of revealed that she was uncomfortable doing this. Again, we're going to find out and in And felt guilty years. about it. Yeah. She literally visited Marilyn Monroe's grave. It doesn't seem like she felt great about what about this project and the outcome of it and what it showed. And she knew that it would go viral and she knew that that's, 
even though it's a fictionalized, dramatized retelling of Marilyn's yeah, life, based on people book. take it as a yes, it's based on a novel. Yeah. People still, of course, are going to take it as historical information. Alternative mm-hmm. history and movies based on books of people's lives are going to be very dangerous for the coming future because I mean Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon mm-hmm. are also taken as historical fact well, by ignorant people dumb people. about yeah. medieval Europe yeah. in a world that doesn't exist. They're like, like there weren't <laughs> dragons back then? It's right. <laughs> that uh, she was left confused about the film receiving the NC-17 rating. Yeah, she, at the very Because she said, oh, I've seen worse. It felt like that did feel to me to be a bit of a... Uh, because it's a Netflix movie, so the NC-17 doesn't actually matter. NC-17 mm-hmm. would only actually... That's just for theaters, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, NC, yeah, NC-17 yeah, NC is basically... An R-rated movie means a 17-year-old can go as long as they're accompanied by an adult. Right. NC-17 means nobody under 17 can go. They I mean, have to be, I thought adult. based on the subject matter and the woman being portrayed, it would make more sense for it to be a theatrical release. But mm-hmm. uh, it'll probably it get a limited theatrical. <laughs> uh, Netflix has been doing that with some movies. It'll get a limited run. In From theaters. what I hear, it's it wasn't very well received. Mm-hmm. Um but like this this quote is just so telling. She said, it's disgusting. It's upsetting just to think about it. I can't control it. You can't really control what they do and how they take things out of context. I don't think it gave me second thoughts. It just gave me a bad taste to think about the future of those clips. She did have control over it. She could have just not done it. She, she probably had more creative input than she's letting on as well. And if she found it so disgusting and upsetting that those clips would be taken out of context, then do scenes that are like contextually and historically accurate and not disrespectful to a dead woman. It and seems maybe don't wait till after you film the scenes to talk about how disgusting and upsetting. And it's you also hating on the audience again. Like usual, it, saying that they're disgusting and you're taking it the wrong way. You're taking it out of context when it's designed to be that way. It seems as though she has a great amount of uh, respect for the director, and that's why she went through with them. Without, I can't imagine uh, why. Um, if she, I mean, people even said that it seemed to be filmed in a way that the director was specifically trying to expose Anna de Armas's body rather than show a... a an accurate retelling of yeah. of the novel and of Monroe's life. Like, that it was more like just a stereotypical perverted director making perverted scenes of an actress he was into. I saw a great meme the other day. It says Quentin Tarantino announces his uh, historic 10th and final film or like his, his, or tw- his 20th film. Like uh, he's going to retire after his uh, one of his next movies. And it's like... And it, I thought it, he took that back. But then it was... It, well, this was a meme. So, and then it cuts to the cover of Happy Feet. <laughs> <laughs> a masterpiece masterpiece absolute masterpiece so. thanks for watching this clip guys if you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media links are in the description below bye, bye.